This is Martha Judici, and I invite you to join with us as we begin this exciting series. As the tape begins, you will find that we are in the midst of declaring our prosperity affirmations. We have just finished affirming the great truth, prosperity is spiritual, spirituality prospers. Join now as we begin our journey toward a rich, prosperous life. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. Together, it is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. And another one that I love that comes from Catherine Ponder is I am the rich child of a loving Father and I dare to prosper now. I'm the rich child of a loving father, and I dare to prosper now together. I am the rich child of a loving father, and I dare to prosper now. That's a great statement, that now consciousness. And another one that is very, very important to us to know is that God is the source of a mighty stream of substance. I am its channel of expression together. God is the source of a mighty stream of substance. I am its channel of expression. And that's another great truth that we're going to know more and more about. Another one that we'll be using, and we find the ideas in, is I am prepared for unlimited increase of good now. I am prepared for unlimited increase of good now. Together, I am prepared for unlimited increase of good now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now, that's it, that's better. Prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. Together, prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. When? Now. Oh, you're getting better. You're really getting good, and that's important. This morning, we're going to talk about a few of these ideas about prosperity and how we can prosper. When I was a student in training, minister in training, the, we often had different leaders from around the unity movement come and speak to us, and one of the speakers that came one time was Dr. Sue Sicking. And many of you know Dr. Sue, and Dr. Sue is a very vibrant, alive person, and she was speaking to us about the prospering idea and about the fact that God had created an abundant universe. And then she began to use some scripture, and she began to talk about, in my father's house there are many mansions. And she began to talk about this universe that goes everywhere, and that there's a prosperity everywhere in the universe, and these many mansions, because when we think of mansions, we think of the abundance of God. Well, after she had spoken about the many mansions, she began to talk about prosperity in a little bit more practical way, and then she converted or translated that statement into another one, which I've never forgotten, because it created an image in my mind which is of great prosperity. And she said, In my father's pants there are many pockets, and they're full to overflowing with good. So get that image in your mind. In my father's pants there are many pockets, and they're filled to overflowing with good. It seems a little bit ludicrous, but... By the same token, once you get that image that there is this idea of prosperity that the Father has provided abundantly, has provided abundantly for all of his creation. A lot of people have gotten the idea that prosperity is not spiritual. There are a few passages in the Bible that have been misinterpreted over the years and have been the basis of an idea that you weren't supposed to be prosperous. One of them is the story of the rich young ruler. And the rich young ruler was asked to give up everything to follow Jesus. But Jesus was trying to prove to the rich young ruler that he was attached to his good. He never asked his disciples to give up their boats, their fishing business. They had it for many years. But he did want to teach them that they should not be attached to their possessions. In other words, not to be possessed by their possessions. Prosperity is spiritual. Prosperity is spiritual. And the more spiritual you are, the more you prosper. The more you prosper. 
You do not have to have an accumulation of outer things to be prosperous, but you do have to have access to and the free flow of good in your life to be experiencing prosperity. And that's what true prosperity is. When you have the things that you need at the time you need them in the right way and in the right place that you can have everything you need and you are prospering in every way. Jesus, our way sure, gave us a great message, a great prosperity message when he said, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Can you get an image of that? Can you get an image of a kingdom that has been prepared for each and every one of us, that is accessible to us, that is rich with all good, rich ideas, rich experiences, rich expressions, everything that you could want to prosper you. And Jesus is saying, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit this kingdom. How do you inherit something? You claim it. You claim it. If you have not been claiming your kingdom, your good, then today is the day that you want to begin to do that. He also said, I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. He didn't say, I come that they can have life and have it stingily, that everything is going to be rough and tough on you. He didn't say that. He said, I'm going, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Get a feeling for abundance. What is abundance to you? What is abundance to you? To most of us, it's a free flow of good. Prosperity is spiritual, and spirituality prospers. Just get that into your mind, that the more spiritual you are, the more you're going to experience the free flow of God's good in your life. One of the ideas that we had on our affirmative thoughts was, it is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. Let's say that again. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom of all good. How does that feel? It is your Father's good pleasure. He isn't going to hold it back. We were meant to be prosperous. We live in a, an abundant world, a world that is prosperous. We live in a world that is really abundant. There are people all over the place. There are uh, everything that God created was created in a superabundance, a superabundance of good. But most of the time we're so limited in our viewpoint that we don't view this superabundance that God has prepared. When I was a little girl, I had a favorite hymn in our hymnal, and that favorite hymn was, I'm the child of a king. I'm the child of a king. With Jesus my Savior, I'm a child of a king. And it starts off with, My father is rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hands. And there is this wealth of the world that is everywhere present in our universe. We were meant to be prosperous, and we truly are the children of a king. You know, one of the ideas that a lot of people don't understand about Unity students is that when we pray, we don't bow our heads. We lift our faces straight up in this position. And I don't think that a lot of people know why Unity students do that. Because in the good old days, when you went into the presence of the king, you went in in a prostrate form. You laid down and you bowed your head so much lower than the king. That is everyone except the children of the king. The children of the king did not bow down. They walked into the presence of the king with their heads straight up, with their shoulders back, knowing exactly who they were. And that's why in unity, when we pray, when we go to our Father in the silence of our being, when we speak the word with power, we don't bend our heads this way. We look straight ahead and up and say, I'm the child of a king, the child of a king. With Jesus my Savior, I'm the child of a king, and I was meant to be prosperous. So think about that when you're praying that you were a child of a king and that you were meant to be prosperous. You have the spiritual right, the spiritual right as the child of a king to peace, peace of mind, 
harmony and love in all of your relationships, health of body, health of body, health of mind, and plenty in all of your affairs. You have this spiritual right, and we must claim that spiritual right. Charles Fillmore, in his book, Keep a True Lent, had a great deal to say about this idea of why it is that we do not prosper or we are not healed. And I'm going to put it up here so you can kind of read along with me as I speak the words for you. But what Charles Fillmore had to say is very important because he said, watch your thoughts when you are handling your money because your money is attached through your mind to the one source of all substance and all money. When you think of your money, which is visible, as something directly attached to an invisible source that is giving or withholding according to your thought, you have the key to all riches and the reason for all lack. You want to get that idea. You want to get that idea that when you think of your money, which is visible, when you think of your good, which is visible, when you think of your body, which is visible, when you think of your health, which is visible, no matter what form of prosperity, when you think of your peace of mind, which is a visible manifestation, as attached to an invisible source, an invisible source of omnipresent good everywhere present, as that's attached to that source that is withholding our giving according to whose thought? Your thought. You are the one who is providing the channel through which that good will come, and your thoughts are the key. Your thoughts are the key. It is a key to all riches and the reason for all lack. And if we can get that idea in our mind and really begin to work with it and realize that we have the key and the key is in our own minds, we can begin to take dominion. We can begin to express the prosperity of mind, body, and affairs that we were intended to. In the book Prosperity, Charles Fillmore tells us that key he talks about it in Keep It True Lent, but he tells us that we have been given dominion, dominion over the thoughts of our mind, and we can begin to recognize that, for it is the one place where we have true dominion. No one can tell you what kind of thoughts you are to hold in your mind. Just think about it. No one can tell you what kind of thoughts to hold in your mind. Now, you may have accepted a lot of thoughts from the past, you may have been conditioned by life and by the people around you to hear certain words, but no one can make you continue to hold those thoughts in your mind. Only you can choose to hold them. Only you can choose to think them, rethink them, and speak them over and over again. So it is very important to realize that you have been given dominion over the thoughts you hold in your mind. You can choose to think them, rethink them, or you can choose to eliminate them. Next week, we're going to talk about out go the blocks. We're going to have to talk about all those thoughts that we've been holding in mind that are producing less than the good that we desire in our life and how to get rid of them, how to get rid of them in a very productive way. For the divine plan is that all expression, all demonstration comes through the gateway of man's mind. That all manifestation originates in mind through the accumulated thoughts, the accumulated thoughts that we hold in our mind that are expressing in the outer through the law. For the law is as in mind, so in manifestation, as in heaven, so in earth. It says that when we think and add feeling, we have a thought. When we are thinking and we invest feeling in it, we build a thought. When we think and we invest feeling in it, we have a demonstration, an expression through the law. So therefore, we are demonstrating our thoughts. We are demonstrating our thoughts. What we need to begin to realize <clears throat> 
that we have a lot of misconceptions, a lot of malformed ideas in our mind which are non-productive. But we need to realize that within us is an inexhaustible supply of all good, that a loving father has provided for his children, for his universe, the key to all abundance. And that abundance comes in the form of what is called omnipresent spiritual substance. Omnipresent spiritual substance. Now substance, this is not substance. This is formed substance, true enough. But spiritual substance is mind essence. It is mind essence, spiritual energy, and it is everywhere present in the universe. It is invisible. It is invisible. And through man's mind and through the mind of all mankind, we have brought forth everything that is out of invisible substance. God is a source of a mighty stream of substance, and I am his channel of expression. That was our word that we spoke this morning. So we really begin to realize that God is this mighty stream of mind essence, invisible substance, and each and every one of us, each and every one of us is the channel for the expression of this substance. Now this primal substance, if you will, this mind essence, can be transformed into the manifest answer and has been transformed into the manifest answer for every need, for every need. Whether it be temporal, that is, the things of daily living, whether it be uh, the mental needs that we may have, the answers, the guidance that we may seek, or it may be for the spiritual needs, the awareness, the greater awareness of who and what we are. But this one omnipresent substance is what we have been using to build our world. Our body is formed substance. We call it matter. Our body is formed substance. Our world is formed substance. Our thoughts are formed substance. They are just as real as our body. And a lot of people don't think that. They think that thoughts are something nebulous. But Charles Fillmore very definitely teaches us, and we know it to be true, that thoughts are things and that we are manifesting our thoughts. This primal substance is the source of all manifestation. It is available at all times and in all places. There is no absence of this substance of, and its availability. And no matter how much of it that you use, you can never deplete it. Can you get a picture of an omnipresent substance that you can just keep using and using and forming and shaping and that it never can be depleted, never depleted, that it's always there, that it responds to your mind. It responds to your mind and it is shaped by your thought. Isn't that great? That's really a great idea, that there's an omnipresent substance that responds to your mind and it is shaped by your thought and that whatever comes forth is according to your mental shape or mental limitation. Because spiritual substance can be radiant light, it can be manifest as great good in your life, it can be manifest as anything you want, and the only limitation is our thought, our mental lim limitation, the limitation that we place upon it by the thoughts that we hold in our mind. Our other affirmation this morning was, I am prepared for an unlimited, unlimited increase of good now. Can you think about that? I am prepared. Now, how do I get prepared? How do I get prepared for an unlimited increase of good now? Well, there's only one place you can. There's only one place you can, and that's in the thoughts of your mind, in your consciousness. Your consciousness is made up of all of the thoughts and feelings that you have ever thought, that you have ever thought, and your world is manifesting according to those thoughts that you have held in your mind. So the very first thing you need to do is begin to build a consciousness. Next week, we're going to talk about how to get rid of those things which you already have in there, but this week, we're going to get you started Get you started on asking, asking. 
You know, Jesus said, ask and ye shall receive. But we haven't been paying very much attention to that. We keep thinking that we do not deserve to prosper. But Jesus said, ask and ye shall receive. When we think of asking, and when we think of asking for our good, it begins to open channels for us. And we must ask in the sense of deserving. You do not want to ask like, oh, give this to me, please give this to me, in a begging sort of a sense of a way. Would the child of a king go to his father and say, oh, father, please give this to me? The child of a king goes to the father and says, father, this is what I need. This is what I deserve. I am your child. I deserve to express the good that you have, provi have provided for me. And when you speak in that consciousness, the father responds. I remember when I was raising my two daughters, there were times when things weren't always as abundant as they should be in my life, but I was a good truth student, and I had learned the law, and I had learned the ideas, and there was an, always a favored affirmation of mine that if you believe that, that God is the source of your supply, act like it. If you believe that God is the source of your supply, act like it. And I use that idea very, very often. Well, this one Christmas, things were a little bit tight, and I knew that the girls were going to have new dolls for Christmas because I had already put them away. But I really thought that it would be really very nice if I could have something for them to put the dolls in. And they both would have liked to have had buggies for their dolls. So I was really thinking about this, and I began to walk around and say, Now look, Martha, you're doing the, your best in life. You are doing all of the things that you should be doing. Now, your father is a father who has an abundance. My father is rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hands. And I begin to think about that. And I begin to affirm the idea that the good that I desired and the good that I desired for my daughters was forthcoming, that it was forthcoming now. There was no way in the outer that I could see this coming about. But I began to affirm, I began to speak the word, and then I let it go. And when I, one day while I was at my office, I walked in and there was an envelope on my desk. And when I opened the envelope, and I don't know who it came from, but there was the exact amount of money that I needed to purchase the two buggies for the girls. I had spoken the word, I had asked in the consciousness knowing that spirit will provide through channels which I may know or which I may not know. That the abundance would come when I needed it and as I needed it. Again, when I was in ministerial school, I found myself in that same position. And I began to speak the word and I said, now look, Father. And I often talk to God, the spirit of God within me like that. I say, now look, I'm really doing what I'm supposed to do. And yet things seem to be getting a little tight right now. And I have a need for an increase in my supply. And I know that you're the source of my good, and I've been acting like it. Now, let's see it come through. And I no sooner had said that, and I no sooner had established that asking consciousness, than all of a sudden I received in the mail two letters. One letter was an immediate answer with a check. And the other was also a check but said, you know, I've been thinking about this and I've decided to increase my tithe to the church. But then I began to think about the idea that the tithe can go to God's work, our workers, our workers. And I knew that you were working in God's work, so I've decided to send you the increase in my tithe. And I'll send it to you every month while you're in school. So every month while I was in school, this increase came. Our belief is the si equals the size of the channel. Our belief determines what we will receive. Our belief is the cup that we hold up for spirit to fill with substance. If you believe that you can be prospered, you will be. If you don't expect to be prospered, you won't be. If you ask for one thing, if you ask for, say, $1,000, but in your heart you really believe you may get 
$100. If you ask for a great job, which will be fulfilling all of your talents, but you believe in your heart that you may be get a very mediocre job, if you ask in your heart for the right companion, for the right companion in your life, but you feel like you're going to have to settle for whatever comes along, you will. You will. Because your belief, not what you are asking for without your faith invested in it, is what's going to be forthcoming. If you are going to ask, begin to feel that the Father has prepared just the right expression, the right experience, the right job, the right person, the right activity, just for you. And that there is someone who wants to be with you, waiting for you, the right person. And begin to invest your feeling in that, and thinking plus feeling equals demonstration. The good feeling will bring about the demonstration very quickly. One of the ideas that you have to realize is that along the way, if all of a sudden something confronts you and you don't think it's going to work, don't see that challenge as a roadblock. See it as an opportunity to grow, to grow, to see if you really believe in what you're asking for, if you really believe in what you're asking for. Don't ask why it happened to you. Oh, my goodness, here I've been praying. Why did this have to happen? Why did this have to come along? We all do that, and then we start beating ourselves. We beat ourselves, and we begin to condemn ourselves, and we have to realize that God doesn't condemn us, that God intends for us to be prospered. So we don't ask, why did it happen? Say, okay, Father, what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do now? Am I supposed to let this overwhelm me? No. I'm supposed to begin to draw from within me on that power of my Christ self so that I can experience and express the good that you have intended for me. Someone once said, if someone hands you a whole bushel basket of lemons, make lemonade. Make lemonade. So if you have lemons handed into you in your life, make lemonade out of them. Find out how you can convert what has happened to you into something that can be of great good to you. For nothing is too good to be true about any of us. We deserve the best. I deserve the best. Together, I deserve the best. Again, I deserve the best. Again, I deserve the best. Do you feel it? Do you really mean it? Are you going to settle for second best? No. You deserve the best. Begin to devote every thought of your mind every feeling to the fact that you deserve the best. Begin to discipline your every thought. If you begin to think of yourself as not deserving the best, or that you have to suffer, or that everything is hopeless, no, that's not the truth. The truth is that you deserve the best. You begin to think about what you want instead of what you don't want. We spend an awful lot of time thinking about what we don't want. Do you know that? We think about the things, the negative aspects of life, instead of thinking about the positive aspects of life that we really do want. And remember, whatever you invest your living energy in, that's what's going to be forthcoming. Think about what you want. Think about prosperity. Think about the fact that I deserve the best. I deserve to be prospered. Speak prosperity. You know, we speak an awful lot of negative. Oh, it's hard times. Oh, there aren't enough jobs to go around. Oh, there isn't enough money to go around. Oh, things are tight right now. We talk about those things every day and talk about the lack, the shortage, the good that isn't there. I have news for you. Omnipresent substance is everywhere, waiting to be formed and shaped by your thought. And the richer the thought, the richer the manifestation. So begin to talk prosperity, speak prosperity. Begin to speak words of prosperity every day. Not just general, not just general, but begin to speak specific words of prosperity for yourself. 
If you begin to speak general words of prosperity, what are you going to get? General results. But if you speak uh, words of prosperity which are specific for you, what are you going to get? Specific results. Specific results. But if you're concerned about, say, gee, I'm forcing my own will upon this, what do you say then? This or something better. This or something better. Always leave the door open for the spirit within you to work through you in the best way. And then, of course, give thanks. Give thanks to God, the source of all good in your life. Give thanks like Jesus did. Jesus said, thank you, Father, that you hear me, and I know that you always hear me. I know that you always hear me. And the spirit within you always does hear you. Prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. This is the keynote that we're going to be speaking all week long. And I want you to take this affirmation with you. Prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. Together, prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. Again, prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. And once more, prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. Do you know why we say things three times? I guess a lot of people don't know that. We say things three times because, first of all, we are affirming a truth in spirit. Then we are affirming that truth in soul, our thinking and feeling. And then we are affirming that truth in manifestation. So whenever we speak something three times, the spiritual truth, the soul accepting the idea, and the manifestation of that idea. So let's say it one more time. Prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. Together, prosperity is my spiritual right. I dare to prosper now. When? Now. When? Now. Now you've got it.